Welcome to our first tutorial about debugging. Debugging can be tedious and frustrating, but you can take some steps to make it easier. So one thing you can do before you start writing a complex program, write your logistics on paper. Later on, you can adjust and improve your logistics while you're writing the code. Secondly, do test your code frequently as you've seen me do, even after making minor adjustments. So each step of the way, stop and test. It makes it a lot easier to catch your mistakes. It might seem like a bit of a nuisance, but in the long run, this strategy saves you a lot of time and frustration. And one more tip, document your code as thoroughly as you can. You document your code with lines that are commented out using an apostrophe or a single quotation mark. Your detailed and clear comments will help you refresh your memory and also clarify your intentions or your goals if others are working on your code. You'd be surprised at how easy it is to forget what's going on, so do yourself and your colleagues a favor by commenting your code as thoroughly as you can. In programming, we deal with three types of errors. The first is a syntax error. The second type of error is a runtime error. And the third type of error is a logical error. For syntax errors, it comes down to whether or not you've misspelled something or missed a character. Let me just insert an error in the code. Now notice that the color changes right away, so this is a clue that something is wrong here. Here's a diagram that explains the color coding used in iLogic. Red is for Visual Basic keywords and standard objects. Gray is for text that's commented out. Black is used for numbers and for the Boolean values true and false. Green is used to indicate text strings. Purple is for iLogic functions and for some common Visual Basic functions. The blue is for parameters of your model. And brown is used for everything else. When I inserted that spelling mistake in front of the variable declaration, the text turned brown. Generally speaking, iLogic doesn't have many debugging tools, so do keep an eye on your code to help you catch the syntax errors. OK, let's get back to our code and the error that I've got here. Let's see what happens when I try to compile the program. iLogic lets us know we have a problem in line two of our code. Let's click OK. Right here we have two new tabs, errors and warnings. The problem line is also highlighted in the code as well. I'm going to remove that small d. And the text is restored to red for Visual Basic keywords and standard objects. By the way, notice that in the status bar, I see the position of my cursor now, line 2, column 1. Let's create another type of syntax error. So I'll just delete this declaration of the variable. Basically, part of the code is simply missing but we've got no indication that anything's wrong. Let's compile our program by clicking OK. And we get a nice detailed error description. In line 2, the type is expected. Let's click OK. And line 2 is highlighted. Let's declare this variable as an integer. And I'll create one more syntax error. I'm going to remove the equal sign here. Let's compile our program. iLogic lets me know that we've got a problem on line 5. Let's click OK. And put back the equal sign. OK, let's try another syntax error. I'm going to remove the bracket here. So once again, as you see, we have no indication that anything is wrong with our syntax. Let's click OK to run the program. iLogic tells me we've got a problem with line 10. And it even tells me that the close parenthesis is missing. 
Let's restore the close parenthesis. Runtime errors are basically errors that occur when a program runs. As a result, programs get aborted unexpectedly. Let's change our code a little bit. I'm going to create a runtime error with it. And let's bring in an input box. By the way, can you see another potential for a syntax error right here? Let's delete this part of the code. And I'll leave the default entry text right here. Now let's run our program by clicking OK. Enter 5. Click OK. So while the program didn't give us correct results, it ran nevertheless. Let's click OK. And let's try to run it again. Now let's say the user leaves the default entry in the input field. Let's click OK. And here's our runtime error. The conversion from the string to the integer is not valid. So every error that I've created up to this point was a syntax error. This type of error is different. This is a runtime error. Notice also that we don't get any specific line information telling us where the problem may have occurred. Let's click on the More Info tab. Here we see the same message that we saw in the previous tab, that the conversion from the string to the integer wasn't valid. Click OK. Now let's take a look at some logical errors. Let's delete this code and enter a value of 5.5 .5 for y. Logical errors are basically flaws in the thought process behind your code. So the code will run correctly, but you'll end up with unexpected results. Or you might end up with correct results sometimes and incorrect results other times. As you can see, logical errors are usually the most difficult to fish out of your code. Like me, I'm sure you'll end up saying this more than once. This should work, but it doesn't. Well, it doesn't because of some kind of logical error. Constant testing of your code comes in really handy when you've got a potential logical error at play. OK, let's test out the code that we've got here. We'll click OK to compile our program. x times y equals 0. So the results are unexpected and incorrect. Let's improve our code a little bit. x space amber symbol space open double quotation marks space asterisk space double quotation marks space amber symbol space y space amber symbol space double quotations and space. Let's test it out. Okay, we can see that the value in our variables gets passed through, but we've got a problem with the equation somewhere, because 4 times 6 does not equal 0. Let's click OK, double-click on error to open up the rule for editing. And of course, the problem's right here. I had commented out this line. Let's bring it back in. Let's say you'd commented this line out by accident, or maybe for the purposes of debugging. All right, let's run our program again and see what happens. Now notice that instead of 4 times 5.5, which is what I had in the code, I've got 4 times 6. Let's click OK, double click again to edit. Basically, we calculate y as an integer, but we've initialized it with a fractional value. Let's fix that by declaring y as a double rather than as an integer. Remember, the double variable type will support fractional numbers. Let's run our program again. And now we get the correct results. Let's click OK. So by now the code seems to work fine, but there is a problem. You can probably see that y is declared here, but the variable x is not. Let's do that up here, dim space x as integer. We were still able to run our program, so as you can see, Visual Basic can be very forgiving. You'll come across some situations where it's not so critical to declare your variables, and in some situations it's actually a very good idea and very important to do so.
You may have also noticed that I have created another potential logical problem by declaring x as an integer. In my code below, x is indeed currently assigned a value that's an integer. And so when I test, all is well. 4 times 5.5 is indeed 22. Let's say I stop debugging now and release my program. And then later on down the road, the user has an issue because he or she enters a fractional number rather than an integer. Let's enter a value of 4.5. Let's test the code to see what happens. So Visual Basic only uses the integer part of the number. Let's fix this logical error. We do that by declaring variable x as a double. Let's test again, and we get correct results now. So in closing, even in such a small block of code, we can have quite a few types of errors. Many of them are not easy to spot. For this reason, it's a good idea to draw your logic out on a piece of paper first and keep that document handy. You may make some adjustments to it in the process of writing the actual code. Of course, test your code often. And finally, comment your code as much and in as much detail as you can. This may seem bothersome or a waste of time while you're writing the code, or maybe distracts you from the scripting, but it'll definitely save you time in the long run. Your colleagues will be grateful for it, and you will too when you come back and take a look at your script six months or a year later. And this concludes our first tutorial about debugging your work.